Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to my uh, today's presentation on Ovidia's Jetson Carrier Boards and Embedded Systems for Edge Computing. A little company overview. Uh, Ovidia was founded in 2001 in Germany. It's privately owned and located in Bavaria, Germany. So everything we do is made in Germany. Uh, we concentrate on the development and the production of uh, carrier boards for the entire Jetson family. So here you see examples of the uh, TX2 on the bottom, the NX in the middle and the AGX on top. In January we moved to larger premises and thereby doubled the bot production capacity to about 300,000 bots per year. So we are ready for your volume orders. Apart from the carrier boards for the Jetson uh, compute modules, we also do fully configured passively cooled embedded systems, again for the entire product line from the Nano to the AGX Xavier. So on the bottom we picture a very compact passively cooled enclosure for the Nano and on top uh, a bigger with a more uh, thermal uh, capacity, a bigger enclosure for the NX or for the AGX Xavier. For the NX we also offer a dual NX option, so you can fit two NX compute modules into one enclosure. These uh, systems may be equipped with a compute module or we can also supply it as a bare bone system without the module. Optionally we can install an M2 card. PoE is optional, so we can either supply a PoE PD to power the system from a network switch or we support PoE PSE to power network IP cameras connected to the system. An IP67 version of these enclosures is in development. Also, we design, develop actively and passively cooled custom embedded systems. Here are a couple of examples of these uh, enclosures. So we have on top the actively cooled enclosure with a fan and optionally some air filtering. And uh, the physical design, the sizes and so on that can be customized. On the bottom we show a passively cooled enclosure, again using a similar uh, setup as for the uh, uh, systems I've shown in the last slide. Again options for the NVMe card, PoE and various M2 modules for LTE, 5G modems or KEE for Wi-Fi, Intel Wi-Fi modules is possible. And last, we have developed a GPIO card with solid state relays to be able to drive very high loads. Now I like to introduce you to three customer success stories. First, we have VoiceServer.com, which is a data center implementation of the AGX Xavier. Second, we have Robotnik's equipping municipal trucks to collect not only garbage, but also data. And we can see, or the company doing this has seen that there is a lot of value in collecting data. Last, we have Arculus, which is doing a mobile autonomous robot powered our, by our Ovidia integrated electronics, which combines AI capability with the high current, high voltage motor drive and charging circuitry. VoiceServer.com is powered by Gustav Enterprise, which is a rack mount system, which is installed in a data center. This cloud service provides tracks translation and speech synthesis as a cloud service. We show you an example of voice server later on in our presentation. Operated is this in various data centers across Germany with load balancing in the front to um, associate or allocate the request to one of the uh, best targeted uh, servers. The physical platform today is a 1U rack system with two AGX saviors installed in this very rack system. Carrier board is an X221 with about one terabyte of M2 NVMe SSD storage. This system is gaining quickly 
uh, pop popularity, so the installation is growing rapidly, which causes an issue. We have to see how we can lower the cost of the installation by increasing the density of the AGX Saviors. Uh, the Gustav Enterprise server is a half rack wide system, which is kind of unusual. But uh, the idea is that you can fit two of these systems in a one RU space. And also this uh, small width of the system allows to integrate the system in other applications, which are not necessarily like server racks. So in mobile, uh, like installations for uh, broadcasting trucks or many other applications like that. Uh, this form factor is very nice and gives a lot of flexibility. So in the future, as I mentioned before, we have to see how we can get more of these AGX saviors into one IU. So to accelerate the integration of this, we developed the X400, which is the smallest possible AGX savior uh, carrier board. It's only 90 by 100 millimeters in size. Now you may ask yourself, the uh, AGX is 87 millimeters. Why did we go for 90? Very simple reason: we had to use the we had to use the extra space for the M2 card to fit the uh, 2280 uh, M2 SSD card. So we have integrated two Ethernet ports: one native gigabit Ethernet port and one using a PCI Express server-rated I210 Ethernet controller from Intel. We have two USB 3.1 ports and one HDMI port. And all this in this tiny form, form factor. So we can use this for custom development projects. And I will show you what we can do with this in the next slides. The X404 is based on uh, four X400s plus an integrated gigabit ethernet switch. So this new carrier board is uh, putting four AGX saviors in a very tiny form factor and gives us some very interesting uh, options in terms of flexibility. So for a small form factor rack system, which is only 50 centimeters deep, uh, we can integrate up to three of these uh, X400 four boards in a single system together with an 800 watt power supply. And each, as each of these modules uh, has an integrated Ethernet switch, we bring out three Ethernet ports, up to three Ethernet ports on the back panel of the rack system, and these will be routed to an integrated network switch in the rack. So this already allows us in a 50 centimeter, like tiny rack system, uh, integrate uh, up to 12 AGX Xavier modules. Next, we can go beyond this. We can actually fit up to 24 AGXs into one rack unit. This system will be about 90 centimeters deep, so it will use the full potential of uh, the large racks and integrate six of these uh, four module carrier boards in a rotated fashion. So now we have uh, allocated these six one after the other and we have six internal network connections going into a system management board, which then combines those six into a single uh, Ethernet port going out of the system. On top, the system management board allows us to supervise the AGX saviors and possibly introduce a system where the AGX savior is rented out for a certain time, and then when the session is done, is completely refreshed with a, with a new uh, plain image. And the image, so the Jetpack version, for example, could be specified and selected. Timing-wise, we, in, we um, expect to have first samples of this system in Q3 this year. Now I'd like to introduce you to a second use case where the Ovidia carrier boards are being used. It's the Remondis data fleet, which not only collects masses amount of garbage, but also masses amount of data. So they have equipped uh, MIN municipal trucks with an AI embedded platform based on the TX2 and J120. 
And now the idea is to uh, implement this technology in the huge amount of trucks, huge number of trucks they have in Germany and in other countries to form a big decentralized low energy AI supercomputer. Today, there are only trials in 15 cities, but they are evolving uh, very nicely. They're collecting data and the data is being used and uh, we see the benefits, the customer sees the benefits, so this project is expanding. Each truck uh, captures about 800,000 images per day. These images are processed locally on the TX2 and are uploaded uh, when the truck uh, goes back to uh, its home base at night, they're transferred via Wi-Fi to the cloud and being processed further in the cloud. And the nice thing is that these trucks uh, drive uh, the same route every week, so we get on a weekly basis updated data, so very current data on the road conditions of the city. Uh, today, um, Robotnics uses uh, a very ruggedized uh, platform enclosure for the installation in the trucks, which I said before is based on the TX2 and the J120. For cost reduction and performance improvement, they want to take advantage of uh, the new Xavia NX architecture and they plan to move to the JNX33 carrier board, uh, which eases the system integration into this rugged enclosure. Camera-wise, they use one or two USB 3 cameras, which uh, the uh, JNX33 brings out because of the integration of the integrated uh, USB 3 hub. Now, let me show you a little uh, gadget we just recently developed. Just unplug the TX2. Install the adapter board. and plug in the Jetson Xavier NX. Now you can unleash the full TensorFlow performance on your existing system. So uh, this uh, really eases the integration into existing TX2 uh, systems and thereby we can extend the uh, product lifecycle time of your existing TX2 design. Now I would like to look at a new platform we are um, employing in some custom projects, but it's not available as a standard uh, a carrier board yet. But if you're interested, let us know, maybe we can work something out. It's something which is really network centric. So we have integrated a carrier board for the Jetson Xavia NX with an M2 slot for local SSD uh, card storage, up to two, I think now even four uh, terabytes. And we have also integrated a five port network uh, hub to be able to connect four cameras, network IP cameras directly to the box. These network IP cameras are PoE powered, if you like, with an integrated PSE uh, supply unit so each port is either class 3, 15 watts, or class 4, uh, 30 watts. And all those uh, ports are uh, powered by an integrated uh, PoE boost converter. As this system only has like a 12 to 24 volt input, we actually have to generate the 48 volts internally. So we have integrated this boost converter, which takes the 24 volts up to 48 volts up to 1.5 amp, so we can supply a total of 72 watts to the four Ethernet ports. Now we have integrated two network uh, interfaces, so we use a native network interface to connect, uh, so this is Ethernet uh, 0, we connect that to the WAN, to the internet, to the outside world, and we have integrated a second network interface based on an I210 from Intel, which is uh, connected to the PCI Express bus of the NX. And this provides a separate second network. So for security reasons, the outside world and the local interface to the cameras can be really separated. So there is no uh, uh, possibility for intrusion through that. So to improve the security of the system. Now, what is the best interface for machine vision? 
As I've shown before, the Robotnik system for the garbage collection application uses USB 3 cameras and that turned out to be uh, nice because of the low latency but it's a problem with the cables. Now the USB cables are not really designed for uh, the implementation in cars and trucks uh, because of all the, the rattling so uh, kind of uh, difficult so really need to uh, look for an alternative there and um, the choices are kind of uh, yeah not that easy. Um, we could look at the Geek eVision camera. Now in terms of cabling that's very easy but the problem um, is uh, the limited resolution and uh, you really need a Geek e networking port for each camera connected. So like the network centric application I've shown before is not really a good platform because the bandwidth, the Ethernet bandwidth is shared. And the Geek E camera is really transferring uncompressed uh, video images, video frames, so it needs really the uh, full gigabit Ethernet bandwidth. Long cables are easy, but the resolution is a problem and the fact that it uses all this bandwidth. Network IP cameras are not really a choice um, for this application because of latency. This application really demands low latency, so this, uh, these cameras have a certain latency, they're good for certain applications, but not for the specific one. Maybe CSI cameras would be great uh, for the low latency, but the problem is short cables. They only really work if you integrate the camera within the system. So if you have cameras kind of outside the system because of cable lengths, maybe CSI cameras are an issue. However, there is a solution for that. There is FPD link evolving and we have implemented that for the first time on the JNX34 uh, board, which I'm going into details later on. And this is a solution which is maybe very attractive for applications like uh, the data collection in uh, trucks because of a cable length of 10 to 20 meters, a thin cable, and fairly good resolution and low latency, so really all the bases are covered. So this may be the perfect camera. GSML is not something we getting into for the moment. It's very similar to FPD Link and we're really concerned this year about the availability of the chips for GSML, which is a very, very difficult, very tight, very uh, long lead time. It's very hard to get. So we are focusing today on the FPD Link 3 cameras. So as you can see, um, for every application, uh, really, it's a question what camera to use. There are ups and uh, downs, pros and cons for each camera, and really depends on the application. Whether cable length is uh, uh, something you're interested in, or latency, or cost, nah, this is really ha what you have to trade off and to find the right camera interface for your application. Network IP cameras. Now, in our um, network centric um, application use case which I've shown before. This is a camera being used and all applications which are uh, not so reliant on low latency of the video can really benefit from a network IP cameras. You really have all the other features in place. Um, we have the long cables, we have a very low uh, bandwidth utilization because of the compression. Uh, and the only thing you really have to uh, be aware of is that you make sure when you get the compressed video into the compute module that you use the GPU or better the hardware decoders to actually decode the data. MIPI CSI2 is a very nice interface if you have local cameras, so I, like if you design like a surround view camera or a stereo camera with short cable connections to the compute module. This is a great uh, camera to uh, camera interface standard to be used because uh, you have very high data rates. They are not shared because there are individual CSI2 buses available. Um, so it's a very efficient way of getting the video into the uh, CPU, into the compute module. The only drawback is short cables. Now this can be overcome with FPD Link 3 or GSML with the chip issue, but so we focus on the FPD link for the moment, which extends the cable to 10 to 30, uh, sorry, 10 to 20 meters. Additional cameras can be implemented by using something called CSI2 multiplexing. So it actually puts like two cameras onto a single CSI2 interface, which we use, for example, in the FPD link 3 implementation. Low latency, low overhead are the key facts of this interface. 
most cases there is no ISP, so image uh, processor on the camera module. These are typically simple board level uh, cameras, so you have to enable the ISP in the Jetson Compute module to do the Bayer decoding. So typically uh, CSI2 cameras um, transmit Bayer encoded video data. With some few exceptions. There are some German uh, companies uh, doing uh, uh, CSI2 cameras with uh, integrated ISP, so they can do the color conversion inside the camera. Examples are uh, cameras like Bas uh, camera manufacturers like Basler or Allied Vision. So let's look at uh, the uh, FPD Link 3 implementation. So here I show uh, our first carrier board for FPD Link 3. I have integrated uh, four uh, TI deserializer strips, two are single link configurations, so one camera interface talking to one CSI bus, and two of the chips actually have dual link, so they can take two cameras onto a single CSI2 interface, thereby sharing the bandwidth there. So um, let's look at the bandwidth required. Uh, typically these cameras are Bayer uh, encoded, deliver Bayer encoded video data. So uh, at 1080p60 we have a net data rate of about a gigabit per second. As FPD Link 3 can handle 4 gigabit, so that can be easily implemented. Even the 24-bit RGB mode with at 1080p60 can be handled at 3 gigabit per second. Arculus prevents the manufacturing with an autonomous mobile robot. This platform has been designed to automate the uh, product flow processes in the automotive industry and also in logistics. So it can automatically deliver goods within such a factory by following signs on the floor which are uh, being detected by an integrated camera. The challenge this project was to integrate the high-speed logic around the TX2, so basically the TX2 carrier board, with the high current and high voltage of the motor controllers, which are used for the three motors in such a robot. There are two drive motors, so the um, robot can navigate, and one lift motor to lift the goods up and down. Uh, these motor controllers are rated at 48 volts, which is a battery voltage, and uh, about 100 amps uh, continuous current and of course a much higher peak current. A battery charger is integrated and the whole PCB is kind of custom built, fully custom built, and has a size of about 329 millimeters by 134 millimeters. Ovidia is a vertically integrated company. So we do everything in-house from schematic design, schematic capture, the layout done by experienced high-speed engineers who know how to follow the design rules for differential lines uh, that they have the right distance, the right length and the right impedance. And we have a very good track record in our products to always uh, uh, have a very stable operation at high speed, so M2 interfaces running at 5 gigabits per second are stable. Also our HDMI interface running at 4K P60 is very stable. So I think uh, we can be very proud of our, the quality of our high speed designs. Next we do the 3D design of board assemblies uh, internal. Using Altium Designer, we can use the 3D options. We can see how the boards are mounted together and whether there are any mechanical conflicts from uh, connectors from one board to the other. We also do the alumin aluminum uh, enclosure design internally. Um, the only thing we outsource uh, is the PCB production, so the actual manufacturing of the PCB. The population of the components on the PCB is then performed by our in-house SMT production line, which is really designed for the highest throughput of uh, carrier boards possible. A real benefit of the vertical integration of Ovidia is that we can uh, um, take on a challenge to uh, design a, custom, a full custom carrier board in one month or less. And we have an example where a customer came to us last May, last uh, year May, 
and asked us to uh, design a carrier board for his uh, specification. So this is what the final product looked like. So he gave us uh, exact uh, information about the placement of the connectors, the size of the board and also the vertical uh, uh, use of the components. So we had to make sure that uh, there are no high components to the edge of the board so it fits into the enclosure. So we got all those uh, requirements and we then sat down and uh, designed a board to these requirements. So the first step was to uh, come up with a mechanical implementation, a 3D model, which could be uh, cross-checked with the case designers from the customer to make sure that the board fits. We then uh, completed the full uh, design layout of this board, of the first uh, revision, within a week. Uh, got the PCBs made in a couple of days and built up a couple of prototypes. So within two weeks we had a couple of five, uh, like five working prototypes which we delivered to a customer so he could do a design verification that everything was working to his uh, specification. We then went ahead and did a few modifications uh, to correct certain things, to optimize a couple of things and two weeks later we produced another batch or a first batch of 50 pieces uh, so that was the Rev2 uh, pre-production run. And those units were then shipped, shipped to the customer, delivered to the customer. And uh, I must say, we were pretty happy, pretty, pretty proud that we actually succeeded doing a custom development in less than a month. Let me show you the details on this board. We have the Ethernet interface here and it's PD powered. So we are getting the power from the Ethernet into a SilverTel module, which is plugged in here, which offers up to 50 watts of uh, PoE power isolated. Uh, furthermore, we have integrated two CSI2 interfaces for Raspberry Pi camera modules. We have integrated uh, an onboard Wi-Fi module by LM Technologies an M2 slot for LTE and 5G cards with two SIM card, nano SIM card readers, an SD card reader. Here is the second uh, nano SIM for the uh, M2 module, the LTE module. Here we have the low profile socket for the NX and nano to keep the height down. Here we have a PCI Express slot for Wi-Fi or something similar, again with a nano SIM card reader. Ovidia has a high-speed SMT production line in-house, which gives us a lot of flexibility, fast turnaround times and also low cost. Let's look at a specific example, the production of the GNX30 LC carrier board, which is a top side only uh, carrier board, only has components on top side and it's a total of 342 components. The first step is the SMT stencil printer to apply the solder paste, which takes about 12 seconds. The second is a cascade of three plick and place systems made by Panasonic, which take about 24 seconds per board. Then we go through the uh, vapor phase oven to do the soldering, and last we do the optical inspection. The um, critical part is the pick and place systems, which are load balanced, and each system takes about 24 seconds per board or 48 seconds for the panel. This gives us a total capacity of up to 300,000 boards per year if we assume an 8 hour shift in 250 shifts per year. And now there's one more thing I like to show you. It's our like little fun project, which is a network thermal camera with PoE based on a FLIR Lepton thermal imager which has a resolution of 160 by 120 pixels. We have created a very tiny 2 by 2 centimeter module which can interface either to the Jetson uh, platform, the Jetson Nano platform using a JN30 uh, carrier board or similar and this would basically create a PoE-powered AI thermal camera. So it can perform AI processing in the camera itself. The second option we are working on is uh, by uh, making uh, the camera connect to an MCU board, so a microcontroller board with a network connection. And this uh, network connection also is PoE-powered. However, because of the limited processing power in the module, it will not do any processing. It will just 
put the uh, video data from the thermal imager as UDP packets on the Ethernet interface, which then can be received over the Ethernet interface, over Ethernet cable, from an AI system to do further processing. And we plan to be able to connect up to two camera modules to a single MCU in such a tiny, hopefully very compact uh, system. Thank you for your intention. I hope you like this presentation. And do you have any questions I can help you with?